Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning this Tuesday morning. I believe we are all well and we are protected by the Lord. And even we can choose even to listen to this message because it's God himself who ordains it and prepares it for our behalf. And I want to thank God even for the gift of life this morning and granting us an opportunity to share his message. We are still in the uh, week where we are looking at Thanksgiving because this is November. In November, we said we shall be looking at honoring God with our gifts, honoring God with our gifts. Particularly this week, you are looking at honoring God with our Thanksgiving as a family. And uh, to go through or to remind ourselves, we are going to look at the book of Leviticus chapter 7. Reading from verse 11, the Bible says, These are the regulations of, for the fellowship offering anyone may present to the Lord. If they offer it as an expression of thankfulness, that then along with this thank offering, they are to offer thick loaves made without yeast and with olive oil mixed in, thin loaves with Oh, sorry, thin loaves made without yeast and brushed with oil, and thick loaves of the finest flour, well kneaded and with oil mixed in. Along with the uh, fellowship offering of thanksgiving, they are to present an offering with thick loaves of bread made with yeast. They are to bring one of each kind as an offering, a contribution to the Lord. It belongs to the priest who splashes the blood of fellowship offering against the altar. The meat of their fellowship offering of thanksgiving must be eaten on the day it is offered. They must leave none of it till morning. If, however, their offering is, uh, is the result of a vow or as a free will offering, the sacrifice shall be eaten on the day they are offered they are offer they offer it but anything left over may be eaten on the next day any meat of the sacrifice left over till the third day must be burnt if any meat of the fellowship offering is eaten on the third day the one who offered it will not be accepted it will not be reckoned to their credit for it has become impure the person who eats any of it will be held responsible. Now these are the instructions that the people of Israel were given by God about offerings. The book of Leviticus gives us a number of offering and how they should be done. Now the how may be a lot of things to explain right now, but when we look at this a short text that we have read, we can see that God was just giving them how they should do it as an expression of thanksgiving. And when we look at the story, we find that there was a lot of uh, preparing of bread and cakes. There was a lot of preparing the meat. And then God instructs them that there's that share that should come to the temple and be offered to the priest and then there is that share that needed to be celebrated in other words thanksgiving day is a day of celebration is a ceremony we need to celebrate thanksgiving day it's not just a day to come because it's a norm because it's a tradition to bring thanksgiving and then we go home but it is a celebration that god called his people to prepare so well in advance and the instructions are given step by step on how to prepare an offering of thanksgiving now as we prepare for our thanksgiving then we need to mind how do we prepare that gifts how do we bring this gift is it just any other gift is it just something that you put your hand in the pocket and you give no a thanksgiving offering calls for preparation because it is a ceremony it is a place of we are coming to meet with god and he's requesting that we prepare it so well so that we can celebrate and have a moment with our god so the israelites were told do this prepare this and the, the each and every piece of bread that they were prepared, their instruction on how to do it and again come to the altar for um thanksgiving now this now brings us to the how 
of bringing. We've prepared because it has been preached to us and we have already done and everybody has in mind what you will come with on the day of thanksgiving. And I know we have set it aside as an offering for God. How then do we come to the Lord? We come to Psalm 100. Psalm 100 is a psalm that we sing every Sunday in our liturgy. And it is a psalm that reminds us of the goodness of God. It is a psalm that helps us to understand God and to know him well. When we look at the classification of psalm, when we look at Psalm 96, all the way, uh, 90 all the way to 106, those psalms are just psalms of celebration of the goodness of God, how great he is, the deeds he has done for his people, acknowledging that his hand has been with them. And so they are praising God. They are glorifying God. Remember some are hymns. They are songs which were sung by the Israelites. They used to sing them and they are classified according to the season. Which season these people were in, they knew which song went or, 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 or would be sung for that specific season. So Psalm 100 brings us now to a season of thanksgiving, a season of glorifying God. The Bible says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Remember yesterday we talked about preserver of our blessings, multiplier of our blessings. That means they will be multiplied and be preserved even for generations and generations to come. Now, the first point that, are, that is leading us this week when we come to honor God with our thanksgiving is shouting for joy. There's a tip on how we should come. We've now been taught in Leviticus how to prepare. The gift is here with us. How then do we come with it in the house of the Lord? One, we are told to shout for joy. Shouting for joy, we cannot shout for joy when in challenges, when in pains. We shout for joy when something good has been done to us. In the first devotion yesterday, we said that we acknowledge who he is, the marvelous deed that he has done, that we have witnessed in our own eyes, that has been done, and we are the people who testify of the intensity of the goodness of God. And so he is calling us. Now minding all those great things he has done in our lives, we come shouting for joy. Shout to the Lord. Shout for joy for the marvelous thing he has done to us. Shout for joy because of what he has done. And when we come uh, shouting for joy in the presence of God, counting, worshiping him, calling upon his name, even looking at what he has done and the privileges that he has offered to us, he is the creator of the universe and everything therein. He is the giver of and sustainer of our lives. We can have concrete reasons to thank God. He has given us commands in this psalm and the one is to shout for joy with our families. We come counting what he has done, what he has done in our lives. And what are the benefits of shouting for joy? When we shout for joy, as we give God all the glory, he comes in for our rescue. A good example is what we find in the book of Acts 4 and verse 19. When John and Peter were seized and they needed to be detained because they were preaching about the resurrection of Christ. They said, we cannot be quiet. How can we be quiet after the miracles we saw Jesus performing? How can we be quiet after we have walked a journey with this Jesus and seeing how good teacher he is and he has taught us the secret of the kingdom? How can again be, we be quiet when he has resurrected? We've never seen people coming back to life. Even when we saw Lazarus, he died again. But now this is the son of God who has resurrected and he has promised us eternal life. He has promised us that he shall come for us. So because they were so confident and they would not be 
uh, made to keep quiet, then we find that they were just set free. They were not detained. They were not put to jail. So there are benefits of, uh, of um, praising God or even shouting for joy for the deeds that God has done. We also have Apostle Paul and Silas. We know the story so well in Acts 16 that they shouted for joy in the prison and due to this the other prisoners were amazed because of the miracle that happened and because the word of god is true we cannot doubt because this is a happening that happened in the eyes of the prisoners as witnesses and even the the, the prisoner uh, warden who was now keeping the gates so that these people would not escape and when he saw what had happened he was about to kill himself but peter and cyrus told them you don't need to kill yourself we are all here but this brought to conversion of very many people when we shout for joy our chains are broken when we shout for joy many lives comes to god when we shout for joy we can receive so many blessings because we are just acknowledging this maker of heaven and earth and he's calling us to do nothing else but to worship him to do nothing else but to acknowledge he is god and he is commanding us all the earth shout for joy so we don't have an option when it comes to the day of thanksgiving let us come singing for joy shouting for joy acknowledging who he is in our lives the way we shout for joy when our blessings come our way the way we shout for joy when we receive our prayers we've been praying and god has answered the way we shout for joy in acknowledgement of many things many blessings that we receive the same thing we should as we bring our gifts we come singing and shouting for joy for what god has done in our lives so may god help us that we may obey this command as we come to give thanks that we may shout for joy for the lord in the name of god the father the son and the holy spirit amen and amen mm -hmm.